Whew, this is a very long integral, but the something that immediately stands out to me is that we have x cubed plus 1 right here, and we also have the derivative of x cubed plus 1, or 3x squared residing right next to it. So maybe a u substitution that we can possibly utilize is u equals to x cubed plus 1, because du is 3x squared dx, and we have 3x squared right next to it. So it seems like it, the problem problem is really wanting us to use x cubed plus 1 for the u substitution, and moreover, also realize that negative x cubed minus 2x squared seems to have a very close relationship with u squared. When we square u, when we evaluate u squared, so when we square this quantity, we get x to the 6 plus 2x cubed plus 1, and realize that these two are extremely close. We have x to the 6 and 2x cubed, so maybe we can also relate these somehow. So u substitution of u equals to x cubed plus 1 seems like the way to go. So let's try to, let's try to make that. And to begin with, we have to make sure we change the bounds correspondingly, but in this case, the bounds are going to stay the same. Because when x is approaching negative infinity, so when x is approaching negative infinity in x cubed plus 1, u is also going to approach negative infinity. So that's going to be negative infinity. And same reasoning for x approaching positive infinity. As x is approaching positive infinity, u is going to approach positive infinity because u is x cubed plus 1. Now let's actually try to do something with the expression inside. We have u squared, so that's u squared. We have 3x squared dx, which is equal to du, so let me write that out. And we have e to the, e to the, how can we write this in terms of u? Let's start by factoring out, so let me write this down first. e to the negative x to the 6 minus 2x cubed, and we can factor out negative 1 to get x cubed, x to the 6 plus x, 2x cubed plus 2x cubed, and we know u squared is x to the 6 plus 2x cubed plus 1, so now let's put plus 1 right here, and realize we added a negative 1. We added an extra negative 1 to the entire expression, so we have to add plus 1 to make sure we are adding 0, to make sure we are not changing what the expression is, and that gets us e to the negative u squared plus 1. So we have e to the negative u squared and plus 1, we can just factor out as another e. And because e is a constant, we can throw it outside. So we have e times integral from negative infinity to infinity of u squared e to the negative u squared du. So, if we can evaluate this integral, we are done. So as soon as we evaluate this, we are going to be done. So what do we do? How do we evaluate it? But it actually looks like this integral, integrating this, is going to be pretty complex. And how we are going to do it in this video is go by using the relationship of this integral to gamma function because this integral has a very intimate relationship with gamma function. In fact, the, this integral is gamma of 3 halves, so that's what we're going to use. And if you do not know what gamma function is, that's more than fine. I will introduce you to the gamma function and some of its properties, and we will use it to, to find this, the, to evaluate this integral. And the second way of evaluating it is to use the Feynman's technique. If I can spell it correctly, Feynman's, Feynman's technique or Feynman's trick for evaluating integral, and I will use this trick to evaluate it in the next video. Of course, there are other ways of evaluating it, but we are going to take a look at these two, and in this video, we are going to take a look at using the gamma function. So how can we use gamma function to evaluate this? To begin with, let's get acquainted with the gamma function. And gamma function of some value n is equal to integral from 0 to infinity of x to the n minus 1 e to the negative x dx. This is just the definition of gamma function. And there are some very interesting properties of gamma function that I wish to point out. And to begin with, gamma of n plus 1 is equal to n times gamma of n. Also, gamma of 1 half is equal to square root 
a pi, and we will prove both of these statements before going on. And the first statement is pretty easy to prove by using integration by parts. Gamma of n plus 1 is going to be, by definition, integral from 0 to infinity of x to the n plus 1 minus 1, which is simply going to be n, e to the negative x dx. And we are going to use the integration by parts. And if you remember from calculus 2, integration by parts states that integral of u dv is equal to uv minus integral of v du. In our case, we want to pick u as x to the nth power and our v as e to the negative x as our dv as e to the negative x dx. So we have our u and e to the negative x dx is going to be dv. So now all we have to do is find u, v, v, and du to use integration by parts. du is going to be n times x to the n minus 1 dx just by differentiating this. And to get v, we want to integrate e to the negative x, which is e to negative e to the negative x. So we have this the, this entire thing is going to be u times v, which is x to the n times negative e to the negative x, or negative x to the n e to the negative x. And remember that we are going from 0 to infinity as, as the integral. And we wish to subtract. We wish to subtract integral of v du. And our v is negative e to the negative x. So negative e to the negative x. Let me just cancel out these negatives and just make it positive. So positive integral of e to the negative x du, and this thing is du, n times n times x to the n minus 1 dx. And what do we have? To begin with, what is the value of this expression? Well, we have negative x to the n over e to the x going from 0 to infinity. And when x is approaching, when x is approaching infinity, increasing without bound, exponential function, e to the x is going to increase quick, quicker than x to the n's power because exponential grows faster than a polynomial function. So we know when x is approaching infinity, the bottom is going to grow larger than the top, bottom is going to grow faster than the top. In fact, that's going to get us the value of 0 because if you imagine 1 over 10, 1 over 100, 1 over 1000, bottom growing faster than the top, then you're going to approach the value of 0. And when we plug 0 in, that's easy to see because we have 0 to the nth power, which is simply 0. So 0 minus 0 gets us 0. So this entire thing is going to be 0, so we can ignore it. What Now, what is this part? We have n, which we can factor out. And I should make sure I keep the bounds from 0 to infinity on the integral. And we have x to the n minus 1, e to the negative x, dx. And by definition, this is gamma of n. This entire thing is equal to gamma of n. So n times gamma of n. So we have proven the gamma of n plus 1 is equal to n times gamma of n. So I have proven the first assertion. And, and before we go on, I want to examine why we are looking at gamma function in the first place. Now this is very intriguing how gamma of n plus 1 is equal to n times gamma of n and, and everything. But why are we examining it in the first place? How does our integral relate to gamma function. So not, let's examine it really quickly. So we have integral from negative infinity to infinity of u squared e to the negative u du. So let me write that down. So we have integral from negative infinity to infinity of e to the negative u squared, we also had u squared, du. And realize that this is equal to 2 times integral from 0 to infinity of u squared e to the negative u squared du because this is an even function. When you plug in some positive value, let's say positive 10 or negative 10, you are going to get the same value out of it because you're squaring it, u squared. So if you plug in 10 to this, you're going to get 10 squared e to the negative 10 squared. If you plug in negative 10, you're going to get negative 10 squared e to the negative of negative 10 squared, but all of these are equal to the one above. 10 squared, negative 10 squared are the same thing. So we know this function is even, so we know this function, if you graph it, 
So let's say the function goes something like this. It, it may not, it's, it probably doesn't. But let's say it's a bell-shaped curve, symmetric with respect to y-axis. It's going to be symmetric with respect to y-axis because it's even. When you plug in some positive value x, you're going to get something. When you plug in the negative of that, you're going to get the same thing, like 10 and negative 10. So we know it's going to be symmetric with respect to y-axis. So it, the integral from negative infinity to infinity is same thing as twice integral from 0 to infinity. So we can make this assertion. Also, why are we why are we doing this? Why are we changing the integral to 0 to infinity? Because our gamma function has the integral from 0 to infinity right here. So if we want to relate this to gamma function, that's the one of the first things we have to do. And let me actually write that down. Gamma of n is equal to integral from 0 to infinity of x to the n minus 1 e to the negative x dx. And we are about to see how these two are connected. And we want to change this u squared to x. So let's make the substitution x equals to negative x equals to u squared. And that gets us u is equal to square root of x or du is equal to 1 over 2 times x to the negative 1 half because u is equal to x to the 1 half. I'm just differentiating this. So what do we have right here? We have 2 times integral from 0 to infinity. Realize the bounds are going to stay the same because because x equals to u squared, u of 0 corresponds to x sub 0, u of infinity corresponds to x of infinity, u squared is going to change to x, and we have e to the negative u squared or negative x, and we have du, which is 1 half x to the negative 1 half dx, and 1 half and 2 are going to cancel out, 2 and 1 half are going to cancel out, and we have integral from 0 to infinity of x and x to the 1 half combined to get x to the 1 half e to the negative x dx. And this is equal to gamma of 3 halves. Why? Because gamma of n is integral from 0 to infinity of x to the n minus 1. And realize in our case, we have 3 halves minus 1. We have x to the 3 halves minus 1. So 3 halves is the value of n. And we have e to the negative x dx and integral from 0 to infinity. So we are basically trying to find gamma of 3 halves. So that's why we are making such obsession with gamma function because once you realize for those of you experienced with gamma function, as soon as you realize that this is gamma of 3 halves, you should be able to immediately say, oh, gamma of 3 halves is square root of pi over 2, and you are going to be done. So if you're very acquainted with gamma function, and you know all of these by heart, all of these properties, then we don't have to go through all of this. But this video is intended for those who do not who have never seen gamma function before, so I will take more steps to introduce you to some properties, proving them before using them naturally. Anyway, since we mentioned this interesting property of gamma function, how gamma of n plus 1 is equal to n times gamma of n, I want to mention one more thing about gamma function before going on, because this is actually very fascinating. So, what is gamma of 1? That is very easy to find, because you're going to have x to the 1 minus 1 power. Gamma of 1 is going to be x to the 0 power, e to the negative x dx, or simply integral of e to the negative x dx, that's negative e to the negative x going from 0 to infinity, which simply gets you 0 minus, because e to the negative infinity is going to approach 0, and you have minus negative e to the 0, which is 1, or simply 1. So before we go on, I wanted to mention this for those of you new to gamma function, because this is extremely fascinating. We have gamma of 1 being equal to 1. Now, what's that telling us about gamma of 2? Well, gamma of 2 is going to be 1 times gamma of 1 because gamma of n plus 1, because gamma of n plus 1 is equal to n times gamma of n. We have proven it right here. So we know gamma of 2, in the case n is 1, is 1 times gamma of 1 or 1. How about gamma of 3? That's going to be 2 times gamma of 2 or 2. How about gamma of 4? That's going to be 3 times gamma of 3, which is going to be 6. And gamma of 5 is going to be 4 times gamma of 4, which is 24. And let's just do one more. Gamma of 6 is going to be 5 times gamma of 5, or also known as 120. And what do we have on the right side? We have factorials. We have 1 factorial, 2 factorial, 3 factorial, 
4 factorial, 5 factorial, and so on. And incidentally, we also have 0 factorial corresponding to gamma of 1 right here. So, gamma function is sometimes called extended factorial. This has nothing to do with what we are trying to do, but this is very fascinating, so I wanted to mention it. So, gamma function is also called extended factorial function because gamma of n... Gamma of n is going to be n minus 1 factorial as we can see. Gamma of 2 is 1 factorial. Gamma of 3 is 2 factorial. Gamma of n is going to be n minus 1 factorial. So in fact, for our question, we had, we had to find, so we have to find gamma of 3 halves, right? We wish to find gamma of 3 halves. And since gamma of n is equal to n minus 1 factorial, we are basically trying to find gamma of 3 halves or 1 half Factorial, and I think that's very interesting because we are basically trying to find the answer to this question is e times one half factorial, and we are actually done. We are technically done, but one half factorial is actually equal to square root of pi over two, and I think it's worth showing that. So let's try to do so, and before doing that, let's prove this fact about gamma function, and this is pretty famous property of gamma function once you study it. The gamma of one half is equal to square root of pi, and the proof is not very hard. It's once if you know Gaussian integral. So let's try to do so. We wish to show the gamma of one half. We want to show the gamma of one half is square root of pi, and we know gamma of x, let me just write this down one more time so we don't have any confusion, x to the, uh, let's say, gamma of n, so we don't have confusion with two different values of x's. Gamma of n is x to the n minus 1 e to the negative x dx. So gamma of 1 half is integral from 0 to infinity of x to the 1 half minus 1, or negative 1 half, e to the negative x dx. And the substitution we make is that x to the 1 half is equal to u. So let's say x to the 1 half is equal to u. Then x is equal to u squared or dx is equal to 2u du. So this integral becomes integral from 0 to infinity. The bounds stay the same by examining this. Of u to the negative 1, because we have x to the negative 1 half, x to the 1 half is u. So we have u to the negative 1, e to the negative x, which is negative u squared. x is equal to u squared. And dx is 2u du. And we have 2 times integral from 0 to infinity. u to the negative first is 1 over u. And 1 over u and u are going to cancel out. And we have e to the negative u squared du. And also known as that's negative infinity to infinity of e to the negative u squared du because e to the negative u squared is an even function. Because this function is even, integral from 0 to infinity times 2 is going to be the same as integral from negative infinity to infinity. And we know this value is square root of pi because it is Gaussian integral. If you do not know how to prove that this thing is square root of pi, you have to use conversion to polar coordinates. That's one way. You may see some i popping up. You can click on this i to go to my video where I evaluate this Gaussian integral when it pops up in some of the problems in MIT Integration B, I, I will actually prove how to get square root of pi from this integral in this video. Anyway, so we know gamma of 1 half is equal to square root of pi, and we wish to find gamma of 3 halves. So how can we? Well, all we have to do is combine these two facts, and we should have gamma of 3 halves right away, because, because we wish to find gamma of 3 halves, and gamma of 3 halves is when in this property n is equal to 1 half. That's equal to 1 half gamma of 1 half because we just have to substitute 1 half into n. We have 1 half times square root of pi or gamma of 3 halves is 1 half square root of pi which is also equal to 1 half factorial. So we have proven something very interesting. We have shown that 1 half factorial is square root of pi over 2 and more importantly, we have shown that this part, this part is equal to square root of pi over 2. So our answer to this question is e times square root of pi over 2.